Hi, welcome to Focal Point on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Darlene Montz, a student in the theater arts curriculum here at the college. Today we will hear about what it's like to be the owner of a magazine from Mativo's bilingual magazine founder, Janae Alicia Shizek. We will also hear from the CCP community about whether or not they are easily offended, and we will even learn a few things about running a federal credit union here on campus. Don't go away. I'd like to welcome Janae Alicia Shizak Aguero, the founder and editing chief of Motivo's bilingual magazine. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me on your show, Darlene. It's a pleasure to be here. How long have Motivo's been in publication? Well, this is year 10, so the most recent edition is the Legacy Edition, and that's the first one in year 10 for us, uh, and the second one is due out soon. What inspired you to start a bilingual magazine? You know, I think part of it goes back to a class in psychology that I took uh, back at Cornell, and Dr. Moss said, if you see a need in the world, you need to stop and pay attention. If someone's on a bridge ready to drop over, do you stop or do you walk past? Do you ignore a need or, or do you help? What are some of the things you do here on campus? Ah, well, we come every fall, thanks to Virginia Ramirez's invitation to the Hispanic Heritage Luncheon. And in 2011, we uh, published a uh, condensed version of the speech that the guest speaker, pa actor Paolo Andino gave. It was an amazing speech and he was an amazing person and so that was highlighted in the magazine. In 2013, we did a big event with the Lasso student group on campus, Latino Association mm -hmm. of, of Students. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun outside of the Winnet building, an outdoor event. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to doing more uh, with the students here and they're very much invited to pitch ideas. Uh, we have supported students from the school to travel to the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute in Chicago for their national conference. That happens every year in February. So maybe in the future we'll have a combined team to go again. That was a lot of fun. Tell me, what would a first time reader here at CCP see when they open the magazine? Ah. They'd see themselves. <laughs> I mean, really, a lot of the content, probably 85, 90 percent of the content is developed and written by students themselves. And as I mentioned earlier, many of the students are CCP students that are columnists and writers for the magazine. But they'll encounter stories of courage, of perseverance. They'll encounter stories of, of peers who are sharing the journey with them toward reaching their full potential. Um, They'll get stories of a kick in the butt to, you know, focus harder and, and you know you can do more type of stories. They'll come across listings of scholarships for undergraduates, graduates, young professionals that they can take advantage of, summer fellowships or, you know, money for college mm -hmm. in the magazine. Um, resources, role models, just kind of a companion in this journey toward your dreams, if you will. Are there any locations here on campus that you like to leave your magazines? Ah, yes. So Sasha Rivera, one of the students on the team mm -hmm. who is a student here, mm -hmm. she often leaves them in the front window of the Winnet building. She puts them in the, it's like a free book area in the rotunda floor level of the Bonnell building as well. So you'll find them around campus yeah. near, you know, student activities or here at the Bonnell building. When is your next event here at CCP? Ah, well, you know, we've been in touch with Lasso, so we're kind of coordinating something at this point, so I'll have to keep you in touch on that front, but hopefully it'll be soon. Okay. Any words of wisdom for those looking to be a writer? For those looking to be a writer, yes. well, I always say read. You know, find other writers who have a style that you like, that resonates with who you are. You can pick up some of what they do by reading more. Um, set a schedule for writing on a regular basis okay. and seek feedback from current writers, published writers, those that you admire, whether it's a professor uh, or go to an author reading and ask questions. Let them look over what you've written and receive feedback. Um, yeah, so don't be afraid of receiving feedback, but kind of develop your own voice 
in the process. That was great advice. Thank you for coming and speaking with us, Janae. And I really hope you receive a whole lot more submissions from our CCP students. It's been my pleasure, Darlene. Uh, they can always find new writing prompts and ideas to spur their imagination uh, through our social media or from our website. It's just motivosmag.com. Now we're going to head into our next segment. Does our society easily get offended? Let's hear what some of our students have to say. I believe society has become a lot sensitive in the last uh, 10 years. I feel like society is just as offended as it was 10 years ago. I, I do think uh, it has become easier to offend. A lot more race issues, a lot more religion issues, and like more gender role stuff going on nowadays. I think the platform for who hears comments has expanded immensely because of social media. Everyone was already offended by something to begin with, but now they have somewhere or someone to push it on. There was a period where less people were offended by things simply because it, it became, uh, that became the norm, especially in online culture. If it spreads by word of mouth, it's easily silenced by not appearing on TV because before our only outlets was like TV or radio and that's usually controlled by a different figure. But now everybody has a smartphone, everybody's a computer, everybody has fingers, they're going to type their responses. The way our technology is, everyone's on uh, social media, it's easier to spread information that way. So it seems like everyone's offended but it's just a more open play field for everyone to voice out their opinions. Instead of, you know, 20 people, it could be 20,000, and that could immediately start a petition or a talk about something that, you know, you know, what needs to be addressed. You could speak out more, so the more you have to say, the easier it is to offend someone. Uh, smack talking about how a woman should live her life or something like that. Um, racial jokes, like, there's just there's one for you know about every nationality or ethnicity, but still a lot of them aren't are meant to be humorous, but usually are still very offensive. If um, offended is synonymous with being more aware, I would say yes. But technically, being offended means easily insulted, and I think that being socially aware is synonymous with being easily insulted is misleading, and I don't think that's the right term for it. Practice in the past, even though they weren't thought of as hateful can be viewed by uh, certain groups as very demeaning to them. Because yeah, people can be insulted by these things, but they have a reason. And the fact that it's happening more often should be a good thing, because it means we're progressive. And that like these topics are actually being spoken about instead of hidden, instead of like how it was before. With the um, LGBT community, you know, right now it's becoming a lot more acceptable than it was 10 years ago. People used to hide the fact when they were gay or hide when they were handicapped and now it's kind of celebrated, which to me is a good thing. Everybody is not going to be on the same page. Everybody has different opinions, different mindsets. There's nothing in the world that humanity just can't be satisfied with. Because everyone has an opinion, so you can always be offended by something, especially when there's sensitive people out there. There's always something that's going to offend somebody. No matter what it is, it could be the fact that, you know, uh, the words Merry Christmas and Santa Claus aren't on a Starbucks, Starbucks cup. I think our society will always become more aware, hopefully, and be more progressive. And if that is what a, being offended is, then yeah, I hope we keep being offended and hopefully we'll change something about it. I can say the sky is blue, the next person is going to say, no, it's not, it's green. Okay, you know, everyone has their opinion. But at the end of the day, it's all about love. You know, we weren't placed on this earth so that we can hate each other, so that we can fight each other, so we can kill each other. It's about love. Once you have love and peace, then we're good to go. Those were some interesting opinions. I'm so glad that our students are engaged with today's issues. In our final segment, we will talk about money at the Philadelphia State and Employee Credit Union located here at CCP. Let's hear about the services they provide.
name is Amanda Altice. I'm the community manager of PSECU's eCenter at the Community College of Philadelphia. A credit union is a non for profit financial institution that operates very similarly to a bank. You can have a che checking account, savings account, um, but the major difference is we're member owned and operated. We offer higher interest rates in our savings products and we provide our members with way fewer fees. The mission of the credit union here at CCP is to provide the student, staff, and faculty with a no-cost financial institution that will be able to best suit their needs. My name is Jasmine Casada. I am a student at Temple University, and I am a system manager at PSCU at CCP. In the experience of working in a financial institution, um, PSCU at CCP has been really nice. I, I like it a lot. I feel like, um, especially with PSCU, I feel like I'm helping people. Um, reach their financial goals, and since we don't charge them any fees, um, I don't feel like I'm taking away, like, I'm helping them because there's a better future with their FICO score and helping them, like, reach their goals. Uh, we assist members uh, and potential members with signing up for membership uh, into the credit union, so signing up for sec savings and checking accounts. We answer basic financial questions about personal budgeting, um, folks that are maybe looking to buy their first vehicle, or even people that are just looking uh, about or looking for the best way to spend their student loan refund. Students have responded extremely positively to the presence of a credit union here on campus, specifically PSECU. We get people that come in every day because we have this inviting atmosphere. Um, we have a nice conversational style with the students and we really are out for the best interest of them. I feel like helping students who are interested in um, building their financial well-being. I find that excellent because um, why wouldn't you want to build for better success in the future and want, to, and want to know on how to establish good credit? Students have exceptional accessibility to their funds even when they're not on campus. But if they're on campus, even though they don't have access to a teller, they still have the accessibility of all of the ATMs. We have three ATMs at the main campus. We have an ATM at the West Campus, the Northwest Campus, and the Northeast Campus. In the event that they go to an ATM machine that is not a PSECU network ATM, they will be reimbursed up to $20 in fees every single month. I would say that folks should absolutely take advantage of the opportunity to join a credit union. Credit unions are member owned and operated and really out for the best interest of the people in the credit union. We wouldn't be able to operate if it wasn't for our members, and we really take that to heart. Um, I think being able to do that as a student is a really, really good thing that students should do. I was a student at Millersville University, and I joined PSECU 10 years ago, and I'm still a member today. It's been a great asset to my financial wellness, and I encourage all students, staff, and faculty to take advantage of that opportunity. Seems like a lot of people can benefit from opening an account with the Philadelphia State and Employee Credit Union. If you're interested, their office is located in the Bunnell Building. Well, that's it for today. I want to thank my guest Janine Chiswick, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Focal Point on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. All segments for Focal Point are produced by the students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in a theater arts curriculum here at CCP. And from all of us at Focal Point, we wish you a great day. See you next time.